All right, today's the day. It is 40 degrees outside, if you can't tell. It's right under 40, actually. Um, and today we're gonna be using the RLS press tool out in the field. Now, I don't know if I'm putting this together with the unboxing video or if this is gonna be its own video, but full disclosure, I did get this tool for free. I got the whole kit, it was sent out to me. Sorry, Paul, that I haven't used it yet. And I just really appreciate it. It's, it's things like that, you know, companies like that that are willing to put their product on the line for us to use in the field, knowing that we're content creators, you know, that's cool. So I have a pretty good relationship with them and Parker Sporlin for ZoomLock. So I've had the opportunity to look at both and we're gonna try RLS. And I just think it helps the viewers because y'all are gonna be looking for this stuff and I'm gonna have the videos on it. Uh, today, we're gonna take it to the extreme. I like to test them out, you know, to see what they can do. It's under 40 outside and we're gonna, unfortunately, I gotta be in a freezer as well. So I'm not gonna escape uh, the cold. So we're gonna put it in a walk-in freezer and we're gonna see how it holds up, how easy it is to put in. I already talked to him to make sure that I'm okay to put it in a freezer. I've never seen that done personally. I've seen people use it in walk-in coolers. I've seen a lot of it being done on uh, AC units, a lot of uh, split systems on residential units, but I've never seen it on a walk-in freezer. So I'm gonna try that out since I've never seen it. We're gonna do everything, I already prepped everything. Uh, we're putting in a new evaporator for a walk-in freezer that we already did the condenser. Customer wanted to hold off on the evaporator. And to be honest, there was not a whole lot wrong with the evaporator. It was very warped. The heaters were warped. Uh, it's just a very old unit. I'll, I'll show you what it looked like before. And then uh, they upgraded to a Heatcraft Intelligen, efficient you know, evaporator. And uh, we're gonna put that in. All I need help with is setting it in, making sure we install it right. And then once we get to the line set, we're just gonna pop on the couplings and crimp them in. I don't have to purge. I don't have to worry about the sensitive components like the this one has an electronic expansion valve. We can just crimp, go straight to pressure testing, and then vacuuming. Super simple. There is the freezer in question. Has other issues as well. It's gonna line up nicely. We have our line set on the same side. We won't have to run this opposite because it'll be on this side. So everything's good. Simple. Drain should be good too. And uh, let's pop that new one in here. Line. The only bad thing is this one, there's a piece of, of uh, copper on this side that doesn't let me put the coupling all the way through. So I'll braze this one.
to make sure it crimped all the way down because it, it ends up, I don't know if you can see how big it is in the middle, mm -hmm. but sides get uh, crimped so they are smaller. So as long as this fits on all of them, that works good. Yeah, I don't know if you can see on this side the little pipe was in the way, but since that thing crimps, I ended up pinching it. But it was a soft copper, so it should be. What is what? This piece? Yeah. It's for the sensor. The sensor, so we don't have these like on, like the other one that we took out, but I have to have it on this one. So that's it. And I got the wire, I don't know where he went. So with Intelligent, we don't need the uh, timer, so disconnected that, took it out completely. And this is actually pretty new because the condenser is new. And then I'm going to make sure everybody's ready to go so that we can uh, open the valves and everything. So as I'm getting out of work today, let's talk about the press, uh, the whole experience that I had with it. So I've used so far the push fittings and the RLS press fittings as you saw today. So uh, I, they worked really well. I had no leaks. I did a bubble test and after it, and after it had been running for a while, I went with a leak. Uh, detector and nothing went off so as far as I know all good to go we went back to address uh, something with a door because they were very stubborn that they didn't want uh, that repaired at the time they really wanted this uh, coil in already the evaporator I guess because it was taking up space but we put it in and we had to go out there for the door uh, they got a lot of condensation and, and ice buildup so we are addressing other issues with that box. It's a very old walk-in box that we're trying to salvage for them. So uh, everything went well. It was a lot easier than I anticipated. I was very worried about it. Uh, the only thing with, with these press tools and the fittings is you're gonna have to make, um, or you're gonna have to figure out how you're gonna use them. So if you were looking into them or you're, or you're thinking about buying them, you just have to make that decision yourself. Now you've seen, um, and even with brazing, I wish they would give us longer stubs on these coils. Uh, you know, the, the, the lines coming out of the evaporator, like the one that I was working on, the line coming out of the, uh, if you're doing a split system, you know, an AC residential unit, I, I always wanted a little more room because I got it most of the time you're cutting off a stub or, or something at least on the refrigeration side because those are usually brazed shut or they have a uh, port that's brazed on or something you know when they uh, pressurize it with nitrogen so we usually have to cut those off and even on this one it was very hard to get any good length coming out even if I'm doing a braze joint I still don't like it that it's so close to the, the panel if you're going to be doing these press on changeouts or installs 
you can go one of two ways. You can either do what, what uh, a lot of people do and what I did myself in that video was press directly on what's there and it's gonna be like right up on the system. Now, I personally would advise against that only because if you screw up or you don't have enough and you still press enough uh, pipe or enough line set and you still decide to press and you screw up, you're done. You have to cut that piece out, that whole piece out. So um, I kind of, I kept measuring and measuring. I kept seeing if the O-ring was passing and, and how much of the line set was gonna go through. And I was just at the point where I was like, F it, you know, I'm here to try it out. If I screw up, I, it's on me. It's my business, it's my job, it's my, um, you know, my thing to deal with. So I went ahead and did it, it works. You, I've seen other guys that do the same thing on uh, split systems. Now, on the split systems, they have they already have the tube expanded, you know, that little bell at the end. So uh, there's ways to cut those off evenly without going too far in. So if you see uh, those done, it's because they still had enough to pass the O-ring and they can do that. Now, like I said, I wish they would give us a little more slack on every system that you put in. Even if I'm brazing, I would like for it to be a little bit further away from the valves and, and things like that, or the panels or whatever. Because when you when you cut stuff on like the refrigeration side, you're cutting very close. So you can do it that way. And the only issue I had was on these Intelligen heat craft units, uh, instead of using a traditional TXV, where you mount the sensing bulb yourself with a mounting bracket, and then you, you, know, you cover it and all that, uh, what they're doing on these, it's an electronic expansion valve. So they're going to have this little piece of copper that you slide a sensor in. And that little piece of copper is welded or brazed somehow on the line itself. You cannot move it. You cannot put it where you want to. So that was the issue that I ran into. And it was a thing where my coupling was passing but then it was hitting, hitting that that little piece on the side so what I decided to do is I took a uh, I took some cutters some side cutters I cut off as much as I could you know without damaging the main uh, copper line and I was able to to pinch it down and kind of bend it back a little bit and I got the coupling on there now when my jaw went around it the jaw sticks out a little bit too because it, it grabs onto the coupling itself and then it's a little bit bigger um, when it kind of like bites down. So I knew it was gonna bite down on that little uh, copper piece. So obviously, you know, you take out the sensor anyway because you're gonna install it, you know, once you're done. I took it out and I was like, whatever, it's soft copper anyway or it's copper in general. And it bit down and it, it just crimped the end of the uh, that little sensor uh, piece, that little piece of copper that holds the sensor. So not a big deal, it worked. Uh, I, the sensor fits in there. It's a relatively long piece of copper. I don't know why they made it so long, but it didn't matter if I pinched the end of it. So that's the only thing, if you're gonna put it directly on these uh, coils, whether it's AC coils, I mean AC uh, condensers or uh, furnace or a refrigeration uh, walk-in. So you're gonna have to make that decision on your own. The second route you can go is one that I would recommend and I am able to do this myself because I like to prep off-site or I'll prep in the parking lot early in the morning before we actually do the job is you can braze on and it'll be very easy to do is braze on whatever line set you need and just just give yourself a few inches so like on a unit like that that I put in where it's a refrigeration evaporator and condenser whichever one you get a piece of pipe that goes in the that that fits on it that you're supposed to brace to it and then just give yourself you know a good four or five inches and uh braze it on there ahead of time you can do that the day before the morning of however you want to do it i personally do stuff like that anyway so it's not a big deal and that's the way i would recommend it that way when you go to it you already have that piece that the coupling will go on to. So yeah, like I said, you can uh, add your own little stub to them, braze it on there. Now, 
people are going to be like, well, you have to braise it on anyway. Why don't you just braise in the line set? Like I said, you can do it ahead of time. So if you're working, like I said, in the hospital, in a, uh, an area, you know, where you don't want to get a, you don't want to pull a fire hot permit. Uh, you don't want to deal with that kind of the stuff because some places do make it a, a hassle and a big deal to do that stuff. Uh, I have places that don't even like me or they give me such a hard time, you know, when I'm rolling in my torches and, and they're, they have a lot of concerns. So uh, you can braise this and do that either in your van. I do a lot of prep work in the van. I put the evaporator coil on the back and I braise um, like my TXV. Uh, if I can't, my solenoid coil. I already do that kind of stuff. So if I just need to braise on a couple of stubs and then uh, just have it ready where we can hang it and press it in, then we're good. Uh, same thing with the condenser coils, you can put in your little stubs off-site at either your warehouse, like I said, your van, uh, or in the morning, like I said, I've done it in the parking lot too, where I'm putting in my um, TXVs and, and stuff like that. So you can do it ahead of time, brazen in these, these stubs, it's not a big deal, at least to me. And then uh, when you go on job site, you can take your press tool down, it's a lot lighter than your torch kit. Uh, it's a lot easier. It's a lot quicker. You're just gonna go in there and press a couple times You don't need your nitrogen uh, Purge you do need it to pressure test, but you don't need to take it down right away to uh, Purge and run it and all that, you know, you save yourself the uh, oxygen acetylene nitrogen or a little bit of nitrogen and uh, You go about you know your install and you're good. So that's just my my two cents and uh, I think it's a good alternative to brazing it works I have not had any leaks. Uh, we're good. So yeah, I hope this helped. Uh, this is just my real world uh, use in this whole press field that is getting a little more popular. And uh, it's definitely a good alternative, like I said. And uh, like I, I know the main concern is, is the cost. I know that it's the jaws that cost the most. So you do want to make that decision on what uh, brand you're going to go with because each brand has their own jaw. And it's like with anything, uh, if you go and do work for somebody, whether it's commercial, residential, and you use it, if you're worried about the cost, you know, tag on a fee, a press fee or whatever you want to call it. And then uh, the more you use it, it'll end up paying itself off. You do save time and labor. I think uh, anything that can make the job easier for you and that goes mentally and physically, right? You're less tired at the end of the day, less frustrations. If you find a tool that makes you know your job easier, I definitely think it's worth at least that, uh, where you're not frustrated or exhausted at the end of the day. If it can help you, you know, from carrying your torches on a high roof, you know, lugging those across the roof, um, taking the time to make sure you have a good braise, you know get setting up your nitrogen for the purge and all that if it can save you any of that stuff uh at the end of the day i think that's that's a good trade-off so um it doesn't replace brazing i've already said that before i'm still gonna braze for most things um you you can't fit that press tool everywhere so i do have a an oxygen oxygen acetylene setup i do have a turbo torch acetylene air setup and now i have a press tool setup so whatever comes up i'm definitely ready and i can i can pick and choose what i want to use for that particular job so i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh there'll be more to come on this i'm like i said i'll check in with you guys if i have any leaks if i keep using it um and the jobs and, and different ways that we're uh using this tool so hope you guys enjoyed i'll see you guys later Okay, so here's our cutout. Obviously, I was doing this for the first time. I'll be better about it next time, but yeah, all of this comes apart. So like, it, I try to split it all the way through and that's not gonna work out. You have to cut out like a window, but uh, yeah, these pieces come out like so. I mean, they're not gonna be in there permanently if you uh, cut into it. So 
Let's try and fit that back. All right, so on the RLS one, as you can see, it really, it really wants to put the copper up against it as much as possible. So it really has to be flush. And then there's your gasket right there. So you have a crimp here and a crimp right here. So one, two, and then the gasket. So as the refrigerant is going through, like I said, you're going through here. And if it tries to escape, it's the gasket first and then the two crimps. So you can see there's a still one there. I lost the other pieces to it, but I'll, I'll know how to cut it next time. And then this is the uh, zoom lock. And as you can see, the gaskets are right there. So the pipe inside almost touches on both. That's how they line up right there. There's just a small gap. So it's not too bad. And then like this one, it goes, it would go up, you know, through the gap, hit this crimp, then the gasket, and then the, the second crimp. Now, when you cut it like I did, you see how it flattens out the copper? It kind of makes you think that they're closer than what they probably are because it kind of smushes up the copper. But for the most part, it really relies on the copper being clean, being smooth, deburred, because you don't want to, as you're pushing this pipe in, you don't want it to catch and snag that O-ring because there's going to be resistance there. But it really depends on the prep and a, a clean smooth pipe or line set you also want to make sure you don't have any uh stamps on here any writing and do not use any super abrasive cloth you're just going to use a scotch bright pad it basically just polishes it up that way you don't have any lines because if you have any lines or scratches or grooves it's gonna it's not gonna be as flush as it like the, as they want you to have it so it needs to be really flush so that when it does a crimp that copper is right on it. 